Hello everyone. Hope this finds you all well wherever you are. It's Kazi Rahman here. And as I promised in my previous Epi Minutes session on randomized control trial, today I'm going to talk about how to do randomization in Excel. In this session, I'll show you how to do simple randomization in Excel and also I'll show you how to do block randomization using Excel. Now let's start with this spreadsheet and you can see that in the first column we have ID numbers of the study participants. And let's assume that we have 100 study participants and we need to randomize them. We need to put them in group A or in group B and we are going to do that using simple randomization. So the first thing that we need to do, we would need to create two more columns. The first column the first additional column would be random number for random number and the second additional column would be for treatment group or study arm. Now within the random number column we need to generate random numbers using Excel and you can see the formula for doing that and then once you press enter you'll get this random number. And then if you pull this down, you'll come up with a list of random numbers for all the study participants. Now, one thing that you need to be careful about is if you look at the formula here, the formula is still there. If you look at the formula bar, on top the formula is still there and the problem with that is that every time you close and open this excel file you'll come up with new sets of numbers because the formula has been working which is a problem so what we would need to do we would need to copy all these generated num random numbers and paste on the same sales cells, paste them as values. And if you do that, then you'll see that if you look at the formula bar here, there is no longer the formula over there. That means all these numbers are now values. So if you close this Excel file and if you open it again, the numbers will remain the same. So once you create the random numbers, you'll need to select them. If I go back, once you create the random numbers, you need to select them. You would need to copy them and paste them again on the same cells as values. And then you'll be able to come up with random numbers as values and you'll be able to get rid of the formula. Now what's next? We would need to sort the study IDs by random numbers and we can do that in ascending order. And once we do that, we come up with study IDs or IDs of the study participants sorted by random numbers in ascending order. And we can put treatment group A for the first 50 sorted study IDs. So we'll be continuing putting A for the first 50s. So you can see here so all these study participants up to here will be assigned the treatment A or will be allocated to the treatment group A. 
and then for the remaining we will put treatment group B for them and you can see that we have 100 participants it is showing 101 because the first row is um, a kind of variable row so you can see the remaining 50 participants have been allocated to treatment group B and then we will sort the study participants by their ID numbers again and when we do that now we can see that study ID 1 will be receiving treatment group B study ID 2 will receive treatment A study ID 3 will receive treatment B so we'll continue like this so this is how we can do simple randomization using Excel now what is the problem of doing this what is the problem of doing simple randomization we actually indicated that in our uh, epi minute 6 session on randomized control trial so let's have a look at the first 30 participants who have been allocated to either treatment group A or treatment group B with the help of simple randomization. We have decided to go for 100 participants. And if we could do that, if we could en finish enrolling all the 100 participants, then uh, at the end of the study, we'll have 50 participants in group A and 50 participants in treatment group B, which is which would be great. So then it will not be any problem. But what if we needed to finish the study early? For example, we needed to finish the study for some reason uh, after enrolling the first 30 participants. You can see after enrolling the first 30 participants. Now, what is the problem with that? Now, let's see among the first 30 participants, how many A A's are there how many participants were allocated to the treatment group a so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve that is a problem because out of 30 we can see that only let's count it again one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so out of 30 participants 12 were allocated to the treatment group a and How many went to the treatment group B? 18. And if we needed to stop the study at this stage, that means that we are not going to get equal number of participants in each of the groups, which is a problem. And that's why we need to go for block randomization. And in uh, my Epi Minute 6 mini session, I mentioned that block randomizations use permuted blocks. For example, if we go for a block size of four, where two will be receiving treatment A, two of the participants, and two of the participants will be receiving treatment B, then we can come up with six different permutations. So A, A, B, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, B, A, B, A, A, B, B, A, B, A, B, B, a, A and what are we going to do we are actually not using ID numbers of the individuals but we are using ID numbers for blocks so block number one and so in each of the blocks we are having four participants block number one block number two block number three so we'll go like this and then we are going to generate random numbers for each of those blocks and we are going to generate random numbers in between 
1 and 6 because previously we have seen that we can have six different permutations for a block size of 4 where there will be two A's and two, C, two B's. So these num random numbers are actually random numbers for those six permutations. That's why we are going to generate random numbers in between one and six. And you can see the formula here, ran between one and six. And once we do that, we come up with random numbers for the permutations in between one and six. For example, the first block will get the permutation number five. Now, what is permutation number five? This is the permutation number five. So the first four participants will be receiving the treatment allocations in this way. So the first participant will get B and then the second one will get A and then B and then A. Now, how about the second four participants or block two? they are going to get the permutation number two. So what is permutation number two? A, B, A, B. That means the fifth participant or the first, first individual of the second group of four will get A and then B, then A and B. And then it will come up like this. So we have this block ID numbers, we have these num random numbers for the permutations of the blocks. And now we have the participant IDs, individual participant IDs. And as I mentioned, the first four will get the permutation of five. So this is the permutation of five. And the permutation number five is BABA. -B -A. That's why you, you can see that B, A, B, A. These are the allocations of the treatment groups for the first four individuals. And then we'll go with the permutation number two, which is A, B, A, B. And we can see it here, A, B, A, B. And by doing that, now we have come up with a list of treatment group allocations for each of the individuals. So the first study ID will get B, then second A, and then third B, then fourth A, then the fifth study ID, our participant will get A, and then sixth B, then seven A, and eight B. So we'll go on like this. Now the advantage of doing this is that after every four, the participants are going to be allocated half in treatment group A and half in treatment group B. So for example, the first after enrolling the first four participants, half two will get treatment A and two will get treatment B. After enrolling eight participants, four will get treatment A and four will get treatment B. And as a result, even if there is an, any early stopping of the study, will still have equal number of participants in each of the groups. That is the advantage of doing block randomization. And as I said before, if you have any questions, I'm going to post this in my student epidemiology Facebook page. Please feel free to ask. Or if you have any other thoughts, please feel free to share. So if you go to your Facebook and just write student epidemiology, give a search on that, my student epidemiology Facebook page will come up. Hope you have found this session useful. I'm going to, I'm hoping to come back to you again with more epidemiological uh, topics and mini sessions in future. Till then, stay well. Thank you for watching.